This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Instead of facing it and talking about it and sharing it, we go to the house of pleasure thinking, you know, I'm going to go yeah. drink this away or take yeah. drugs or, you know, one more sexual experience to try to self-medicate. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. We have a very special program for you today, and it's all about living an authentic life. And let me tell you, it is eye-opening. There are so many challenging things going on in our world which impact our lives, and it's okay to be real and admit that sometimes we're just not okay. We've heard from many people who have been very encouraged by this conversation that we're going to share with you today. It's okay to reach out for help and healing. That's what this is all about. Joyce, Aaron Cluley, Jay, and I were so happy to welcome clinical psychologist Dr. Henry Cloud to our Talk It Out podcast. We hope this honest discussion will encourage you today. This is where Joyce shares the Word of God in her wonderful, practical, no-nonsense way. And then my friends and I talk about the important stuff of just living it. We don't hold anything back. We talk about it all. I'm Ginger Stocky. This is Jay and Aaron Cluley, three friends who know the importance of having honest, that's the key today, loving women around you. When we need a little extra help, we are so blessed to have Miss Joyce here with yes. us. Yes. She yes. jumps in. <laughs> and today we are also so grateful grateful to have Dr. Henry Cloud yes, with so us. Hey guys. Welcome. Hey guys. It's good to be with y'all. We Welcome. need you. I thought we, this might be over my head, so we brought in the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cloud is a clinical psychologist, and you love helping take every aspect of people's lives, bring it all together, and, and just talk about wholeness and, and how God fits into all of that. And Joyce was saying earlier that this is the side with with the issues, and oh, then yeah. we're going to ask you the <laughs> answers. So, <laughs> good luck. I need to move my chair. No. <laughs> we're getting a free couch session. Yes. Here. yes. <laughs> well, with what Joyce... I'm sorry, that's all our time. For you. <laughs> no, that's not going to work for us. <laughs> Talking about it's okay not to be okay. Right. And that's a hard thing for Christians to do because we do want to, I don't, I, there's so many reasons, but we want to have that facade that everything's fine. We don't want people to know mm-hmm. that we're imperfect and broken people, but we all and are. And we think it's expected of us. Yes, From exactly. other Christians, a lot of it comes from other people. It's like, you can almost be more honest with an unbeliever. Yeah. Yeah. Very and true. sometimes you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, a, a, a believer because... There's this expectation that we should be in faith all the time mm-hmm. and always be able to just believe every problem away. Yeah, <laughs> and you're the one Christian who can't if if you say right. that there's something wrong. You're yeah. the only one who doesn't right. know. How. Yeah, I, I grew up in the in the era where when I was a little kid, everyone asked, you know, the adults, you know, how are you doing? Everybody's, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. No one yeah. ever actually said I'm having a rough day. So yeah. I grew up in that mm-hmm. in that environment. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Dr. Cloud, well, what do you think when you well, hear one that? One of the things I, that I always say about that is kind of like when um, when Job was hurting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of his friends, the, what they basically said was a lot of times what Christians will say, that if something's wrong with you, then something's wrong. Yeah. Like, because <laughs> yeah. if someone's yeah. wrong with you, then nothing would be wrong. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. If you got a problem, <laughs> you're failing in some way. Yeah. Right? And that's not what the Bible says. Right. And that's God exactly got right. mad at them in the end. He gave Job all the cows. So <laughs> Job was the one that was honest. And actually, yeah. if you look at the people in the Bible, David is a great example mm-hmm. of being so honest about mm-hmm. how he felt and what he was going through. Yeah. But he always came back to faith in God. That's right. mm-hmm. Same thing with the Apostle Paul. So I don't know what got into the church that, you know, we had to start feeling like that we had to be perfect all the time. Mm-hmm. And if you weren't, you dare not tell anybody, otherwise you'll be judged. Well, it's exactly right. And, you know, Jesus actually warned us against this, about how it gets into the church. He said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. And that leaven was exactly, he, he said, you guys clean up the outside of the cup, but inwardly there's all of this stuff and there's mm-hmm. pain and loss right. and trauma. And, and 
he said, you know, take off the fig leaf right. and start mm-hmm. to be real, and mm-hmm. God can heal this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, we've, I've been thinking a lot about authenticity for the last several months and just wrote a book called Authentically and Uniquely You. And I, the thing that provoked this message in me was I just started, I just started realizing that every time you ask a Christian how they are, they're always fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Praise the Lord. I'm good. And I thought, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> nobody is fine all the time. Now, we may be fine spiritually because we trust God, but I think we can have much better relationships if we're honest and say, you know, somebody asked me today, you know, how my eyes were because I'm getting ready to have some cataracts removed. And I said, they're okay, but they could be better. You know, I didn't need to say, oh, they're fine. Praise the Lord. They're fine. We need to be real with each other. That's right. Yeah. And it's so interesting. You know, Jesus said, I didn't come to judge. I didn't right. come mm-hmm. to condemn. I That's came. huge. <laughs> I know he just we don't he believe started that. the whole thing there. Yeah. yeah. And then he said some incredible, like three words together. It says that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Seek means he's really looking for mm-hmm. To heal, save in the Bible, that word means heal. And lost is interesting. It doesn't mean God's going, where are the humans? <laughs> where, where did I put well, that word? Where, 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 where are they? Where did I put them? <laughs> the Greek word actually means broken beyond repair. Wow. Mm-hmm. So what he's saying is, look, don't feel bad about this. I'm actually looking yeah. for the parts of you that are hurting and broken. That's great. And let's bring them into the light. He yeah. says that a gazillion times. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest with each other. And that's yeah. how he heals us. That's great. That's good. Do you, do you know there's actually brain science about that? Like if you, the extreme would be like with trauma, that when we have bad things that are really painful happen, it, it literally gets frozen in one part of the brain. It's called the hippocampus. And then, and it can't move. And so it stays there over time. That's why a lot of people mm. can, can feel that wound years later when somebody mm. says something that yeah. triggers it, right? But then when we start to talk about it, and like the Bible says, we grieve it and we heal each other and we process it, it literally gets unstuck. It moves through the brain. And then it connects to another part of our brain that has language and understanding and time sequencing Hmm. where it can put it in a larger narrative where it really can turn into a memory and not feeling it every day all over again. Oh, that's fascinating. That it's kind of good. healing that God yeah. says do. I can't wait to that. talk it out loud. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for it loud. just to be a memory. I don't want to feel. That's why I was telling one of my friends, I don't want to feel some of the trauma that I've just recently gone through. I don't want to feel right. the pain or any of it. I don't, it's, it's, it's going away slowly by, you know, little by little by little. By processing, it's right? The processing of it. But I, I'm just like praying, like... I want to fast forward, honestly, to get to the point where I don't feel it anymore. And it's just a a fact of a part of my story. Well, you know, know, we do want to fast forward. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. Um, I I love a passage in Ecclesiastes where Solomon says, It is better to go into the house of grief than the house of pleasure. Because a sad face can make a heart happy. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. A lot of times... You know, people have pain. What do we do? Instead of facing it and talking about it and sharing it, we go to the house of pleasure thinking, Mm. you know, I'm going to go drink this away or take drugs or, you know, one more sexual experience to try to self-medicate. Right. But if we'll just go into the sad face and grieve with each other and all of that, then that makes the heart happy. Mm -hmm. And it's right there in the scriptures. You know, a scripture that I think is really undertaught in the church is in James, confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. Actually, I've never heard a sermon on that. <laughs> never. So I guess I need you to preach do one. one. You but should. it's oh, that there is something very healing about just telling somebody what you've done or mm-hmm. what you're going through or, right. you know, yeah. don't you just think that's an interesting scripture? Confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. It's like brain science. Yeah. I mean, what we know about how things are healed, you know, hurts and all. And, and, and the interesting thing about that verse is it doesn't say confess your faults to one another so that you may be forgiven. Yeah. Because, you know, First John 1, 9 right. says we confess to God right. we're forgiven. 
But to be healed, right? We've actually got mm. this stuff to get it moved mm. out of our system, and and ba- back to being okay to to be not okay, right? right. And, and being authentic. Why did God put your tear ducts in your eyes? Now think That's about that. That's an interesting oh, question. He could have put them under your arm. You spray a little. <laughs> yeah, I How actually, I'm, I'm the kind of person that would have loved that. You know, <laughs> if the tear ducts were not where everyone could <laughs> exactly, see them. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's because when we are, and when somebody's looking into our soul, when we're expressing mm-hmm. our pain, through that connection. It creates space neurologically in the brain so it can be processed. Wow. That's and when the Bible amazing. says, weep with those who weep, we're authentically exactly what you're saying, right. Joyce, yeah. teaching mm-hmm. people, take the fig leaf off, right. get vulnerable, and be real so mm-hmm. that you might be healed. And they keep they- saying, take the, fig le- take the fig leaf off. off. So you're just talking about... Now, that's from Genesis. Yeah, so... Basically being naked out there, you know, right. being spiritually naked, vulnerable. I right. love what you said about and, and it, authenticity. It, just an interesting yeah. line, line about that. I think it was Rollo May who said that, that modern mankind has taken the fig leaf and moved it from the genitals to the face. So mm. now we're oh, free yeah. with yeah. our bodies, <laughs> but we're, we're not authentic yeah. and hiding. Yeah, ourselves. yeah. You called authenticity, the the definition of it, letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are, who God made us. I I love that. That's what a lot of us need to be able to do. Yeah. I I think that I've made a good journey toward that. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm very open and honest about my stuff, and usually everybody else's unless they tell me not to. (laughs) (laughs) uh, uh, So, like, I had a specific question I wanted to ask you today because you're in this field. And, you know, I I had a woman write me not too long ago, and she said, you talk about everything, and you're so open and honest about everything. She said, would you please talk about people who have to take anxiety and our depression medicine? Mm -hmm. She said, I feel like there's so much judgment Mm -hmm. toward people Mm -hmm. who do that. And so... That's something I wanted to talk about today because I feel like we're in a season where God is wanting to let people know that if they really need it, that that's okay. Can you give us your perspective on that? Oh, absolutely. And the biggest thing that people don't understand to begin with is that all medicines are not the same. Right. You know, there if you you know there are tranquilizers that you can take that'll immediately Make you feel fine. You haven't right. dealt with anything. You're, you know, you're just right. it's sort of like, you know, another margarita. <laughs> but this this whole world of what are called antidepressants, you can take one of those. It doesn't make you feel fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What it does is it restores brain chemistry levels right. to where your brain can return to functioning mm-hmm. normally. Right. And so there are a lot of anxiety states that are created by certain kinds of brain activity where you have, have kind of an overactive amygdala. It's, it's, it's like a car alarm. It's yeah. always going off like this. When they're, It's a false alarm. Mm-hmm. And then, then people will feel this, and then they start obsessing about it, like, what's wrong? The plane's yeah. going to go down. The car, mm-hmm. you know, my kid's going to drown or something bad's going to happen mm-hmm. to make sense of how they feel. When really it's a physiological thing that's right. happening because of brain chemistry. Mm-hmm. Same yeah. thing with people that are bipolar. Same thing with a lot of psychoses. Now, here's the thing. This is all generated by an organ, which is your brain, just mm-hmm. like the rest mm-hmm. of your organs in your body. We would never tell a diabetic, mm-hmm. don't take your insulin. Yeah. Just trust in the Lord. Yeah, Lord. have faith. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, right. And their pancreas isn't working. Well, a lot of people the brain chemistry is not working like it's supposed to. And so the brain can't tell itself to have energy and Mm -hmm. to be able to concentrate and to be able to have an appetite Mm -hmm. and to be able to not have a a horrible mood where you can't even get out of bed sometimes. And I have seen so many miracles, Joyce. I'm not kidding. Miracles when people get on the right medicine. Mm -hmm. Right. And and you don't always have to stay on it all your life, but sometimes you need it. For a period of time, you were, you were talking about those neurotransmitters, and they get messed up from a lot of stress in our life or abuse in your childhood. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. And sometimes genetics. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. just genetics. Sometimes yeah. it's just 
you know, something that runs in the family. So I just wanted, as a doctor, for you to tell people they don't have to feel guilty mm-hmm. if they really so need. Yeah. And I, I'm stressing really need because I'm not, I've been hesitant to talk about this because in my position, I don't want to give everybody permission to run to the pill bottle instead of dealing with their problems. Absolutely so, not. But here's the difference. The kind of medicine that we're talking about doesn't make you run from your problems. It won't do that. What it does is it equips your brain to be able to concentrate enough to deal with, to your deal with the problems. Yes. I've treated severely depressed people who they go to church. I'm supposed to be. And I know that I I can't focus. I can't right. read. I don't have literally yeah. the energy to. Right. Mm. And then they get on the right medicine, and they go back to being able to function sure. as the spiritually mature people they are. Well, I just was really, really, really tired of people feeling guilty and condemned mm-hmm. about so taking something that they really needed, when, like you said, mm-hmm. If they were diabetic or if they had a heart problem or whatever else, there's no condemnation. Yeah. Right. So, or not doing and, it because of a false shame, right? Yeah. which should not exist. Right. And a lot of times, um, a lot of times this comes out in Christian language. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, if you had enough faith right. or you Please believe God. <laughs> yeah. Tell or, us more. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, 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 it's just crazy. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's Christian scientists that yeah. don't believe that, you know, there's disease and illness. It's, the Bible says that that when the creation fell, we fell. Yeah. So yeah. everything is affected. Some people have heart problems. Some people have diabetes. Some people have other. And we treat those. Now, here's, here's another thing about this is that a lot of times people do go to, and a lot of times it's a, it's a GP or, you know, family practitioner and, 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 what they're dealing with on a psychiatric basis, 
really is going to take a, a lot of times a good psychiatrist. Right. Because that's their specialty, and they know the dosage levels and which right. one affects which. So if at all possible, I would say to people, look, if you're having, and, and these are all metabolic cycles, if you're having sleep disturbances, mm-hmm. you go to sleep and, they, and then you wake up and you can't go back to sleep, or sometimes, you know, problems falling asleep. If your appetite has changed significantly, like you've lost your appetite or for some reason, you know, if it ain't tied down, I'm going to eat it sort of thing. (laughs) If you're having extreme fatigue that even after resting, Mm -hmm. you're still tired, like the the batteries won't, won't start going. A loss of libido, if you've lost your sex drive, if you have difficulty concentrating, All of those are tied to metabolic cycles Mm. that are driven by neurotransmitters. Mm. And those are really good indications. A lot of times you might need to go to a good psychiatrist or get cleared by your GP or something to say, I think I might be depressed. Yeah, and see, even that, who wants to tell another Christian that you go to a psychiatrist? Absolutely not. (laughs) And that goes back to that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. We can help each other through these things instead of condemning one another. Right. For it. And you know what the scripture actually says? If we say we're okay, the truth is not in us and we lie. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. what First John says. Yeah. Yeah, but good. if we will own it right. and say, yeah. you know, I'm missing the mark, yeah. I got yeah. some issues.
then God is just all over it with compassion and healing yeah. and everything else. It's the people in denial that the Bible is always going, you mm-hmm. don't do that. Yeah. It's not the people who well, are Well, I've caught myself, even since I taught that message, people saying, how are you? And just saying, I'm fine. And then saying, wait, no, I'm not really fine. <laughs> exactly. I have a headache. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like, it's it's liberating. Yeah. yeah, You know, and I am fine in the spirit. I trust God. I'm not unhappy, but I'm not totally fine. You yeah. know, yeah. You, you're not totally fine right now. You got pain that you got to get taken care of nerve pain that's affecting your knee and your yeah. ability to walk i'm not totally fine right now i'm getting ready to have cataract surgery and uh and it's the same way with how we're feeling emotionally oh, yeah. or right. spiritually i'm not fine i'm not fine <laughs> i'm so not fine well, I'm, I'm <laughs> i want to ask both well, of you are, are there areas that um that you find it more difficult to be vulnerable in or even a, a situation or something where, um, you know, help me be okay with not being okay in this situation. I mean, I've, I've learned through this season, Dr. Cloud, you may or may not know, I've recently gone through divorce. Mm. And so the trauma of finding out that my husband was unfaithful all the way to now being divorced and now him quickly being, you know, engaged to be remarried, those trigger points. Uh-huh. Yeah, those trigger points in me are like intense. So I've, I've learned thanks to this platform too. And just my personality period. Like, um, I pretty much talk through my pain, even if it's oversharing, I don't know, but, <laughs> but I do talk through situations because I've believed in the, the power of communication and finding people that you can trust so that they can give you good wisdom. You know, I believe in counseling. I've never been to a psychiatrist, but after you just said that, I probably need to go. <laughs> I'm not playing, but because I don't want to, I want to, I want to be okay and honestly right. be able to say I'm okay. But there are, t- there are times, especially now that the divorce has been final now for about four, maybe four months, three or four months um, officially, and he's moved on. And I've shared with some things, and some people are still like, well, why aren't you over it? Like, why aren't you just... So then I do have a little hmm. hesitation. <laughs> like well maybe I should be over it like yeah. even though it happened it, you know it's so I do have those moments of I'm a very transparent person and I like to talk about things like while I'm in it I believe in transparency during through the process not in every situation but right. I do believe that it's a powerful place to be to be able to share where you are and not always from a testimonial perspective like this is what I've been through right. I like to also tell people what I'm going through now because it's okay to be a Christian and still not have right. good days so yeah well, well, if you look at, you know, I think everybody would agree that Paul was kind of spiritual. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. So I always, when people say this, can I say a bad word? Uh, it's in the Bible, if it's in the Bible. Okay. Right. When we, I, we have editing capabilities. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're, give it a go. <laughs>
minute ago. <laughs> well, you know. Well, I'll use the word. He said, I counted all as dung. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's just okay. a bunch of, you know what, uh-huh. a lot of stuff that Christians put on each other. And I always tell them. your Bible. Yeah. Because the Bible doesn't say what that Christian just told you. And if you read, just go read Paul. And what does he say? I was, I was despondent of life. Yeah. We were getting the, you know, what kicked out of us at all turns and all this is going on and, and it, it just despairing and all. And he, he just puts it right out there. And then he says something really, really powerful in this, this, this one passage. He says, and God, who comforts the depressed, sent Titus to me. Yeah, mm. that's good. Because a lot of people think, you know, well, you're just give it to God. And now your depression's automatically going to yeah, go away. Right. Yeah. Well, many, many times, what God has designed is the the one and others right. of the mm-hmm. New Testament that we come alongside one another. And Paul writes in a lot of his letters over and over and over. I was refreshed by the coming of. So and so. That's true. Yeah. And yeah. and how we're supposed to not hide from each other when we're hurting. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be authentic, and then we can be there for each other. And that's so much of how God comforts our pain. Jesus is there where two or more are, and he's there incarnationally. Mm-hmm. And we need to have open circles like this around fireplaces and dinner tables and yeah. Starbucks where people are doing exactly what you're saying. I think one of the big reasons why people don't do this is because people don't know how to keep their mouth shut yes. about your secrets. Mm-hmm. They, they, don't, they don't have... That's right. You know, there's too much tattling and telling, and people are afraid today if you tell somebody something, it's going to be all over social media the next day. Yeah. That's right. And so there, we need or to have... Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We yeah, need yeah. to have more... We we shouldn't even have to be told, please don't tell anybody this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That right. should just be a given mm-hmm. that whatever you tell me that's personal, it's your story if you want to tell it to somebody else, but I'm just going to cover you and pray for you yeah. and be a friend to you. That's right. And yeah. Proverbs actually talks about, you know, the value of the ability to, to keep a confidence. Mm-hmm. Right. Even, even if somebody's done something to us, you know, you go to Matthew 18. Right. And what does it say? It says, talk to them in private Mm -hmm. right that's supposed to be safe i went to a counselor for the first time this past year probably like a lot of people did and that is the thing that i appreciated the most out of that session was i told that woman everything that i was feeling in that moment and i have never done that before and i have never felt such freedom Mm -hmm. and i want to be able to be honest and vulnerable enough to tell my friends those deep dark feelings i have but i'm too scared i'm too scared that they're going to judge me or yeah Mm -hmm. not because they have but that's a fear of mine. Yeah. Of, mm-hmm. That person yeah. was le-
around not to tell yeah, anybody. She couldn't tell she anybody. Couldn't tell anybody. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Yeah. <laughs> My other friends. So, yeah, it's scary. Well, well, I, I really was... think God's calling for a change. And I think it's more important than what we may realize. I think it, I believe that people are just crying out to just be who they are. Yeah. And sort of stop all the pretense. It was so refreshing to talk openly about a subject that is so often ignored. And we want you to know today that there is no shame in asking for help. Our honesty may be that first step. Jesus understands and he wants to heal our pain. He wants us to openly share our heart with him. And it's not easy to do that. It isn't usually the pain free way but it is definitely worth it. So I hope that you've been encouraged today to do what you need to do. We have something free for you. We would just like to give this to you because we realize that journaling can really make a big difference when we're talking about something like this. So we have a Talk It Out journal, and it's absolutely free for you today if you would like to get it. You can write down those scriptures that are meaning a lot in your life. You can write down your prayers, the things that you're dealing with, and the things that you see God do and it will help encourage you. So let us know that you'd like to get this today. We're going to continue our conversation on this topic tomorrow on the program. Here's a sneak peek at what's coming up. You know, in college and right after, I I really got depressed, really, really depressed and um, hit the pavement hard. And God reached in. I went in the empty church one day and said, if you're there, I need your help. And he showed up and and I don't know anything that I write about that I, you know, haven't learned both from books and being a clinician, but also, you know, just going through pain. And, but God yeah. can heal you. He does. You don't want to miss tomorrow's enjoying everyday life. Be here. We'll see you then. Some people just push your buttons. And no matter how hard you try to love them, they take you from zero to on edge in no time flat. So how do you see the good in people when it's really hard to find? Joyce Meyer wants to show you in her new book, Loving People Who Are Hard to Love, a step-by-step survival guide to help you navigate those difficult relationships and a world in need of God's love. Loving that difficult person may not change the world, but it could change yours and theirs. Loving People Who Are Hard to Love Order your copy today. So the Bible is God's manual to help us navigate life. But life often gets in the way of knowing the Bible, finding the time, knowing where to begin, and discovering what this all means to you. We understand, and we'd like to help. At JoyceMeyer.org slash word, you'll find free resources to help you get more out of the Bible. Step one, wake up for the gonna rise of the sun. Step two. Get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you want to be. Step four, everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day Yo, Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood, blood in circulation One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it Set a goal you control and the steps you take them I try to pick one thought, have some concentration And if I make a mistake, it's called education I try to do this every day, call it replication Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Life ain't easy, y'all. I think there's a reason, though. Ups and downs, just like every different season, yo Sometimes I'm high, other times I'm barely breathing, though I always gotta fight and hide from the demons, yo Negative thoughts are poison, they ride uh. Head full of flaws, so here come the clouds uh. They'll never stop unless I can swap All the bad for the good in my head when I'm lost, uh. Yeah, 
So I'ma fake it till I make it Positive thoughts are overtaken I got patience One day at a time is how you operate a cadence A flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation Stay away from all the shit that causes temptation I know that I like to do it cause it's sensation I live my life in my head like a narration Don't expect greatness, do my best, man, I'll take it Wake up, today's gonna be a good day Wake up Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Whether you're a new Christian or have been walking with Christ for years. So jump in today. The Word. It's free, it's mobile, and it's tailored for you at JoyceMeyer.org. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. Please contact us or visit JoyceMeyer.org to share your prayer requests or partner with us in sharing Christ and loving people all across the globe. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Instead of facing it and talking about it and sharing it, we go to the house of pleasure thinking, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to go yeah. drink this away or take yeah. drugs or, you know, one more sexual experience to try to self-medicate. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life. We have a very special program for you today, and it's all about living an authentic life. And let me tell you, it is eye-opening. There are so many challenging things going on in our world which impact our lives, and it's okay to be real and admit that sometimes we're just not okay. We've heard from many people who have been very encouraged by this conversation that we're going to share with you.